Previously on Rule Your World with Reverend Prince Abba. David Lossborn was 16 years old, newly married couples. And they were all over the world, shaking the whole world. After they did their wedding, they went to do their honeymoon in India, and the honeymoon was to go and preach. The people who are alive, they've been alive for 30 years. Papa, the whole side in death is still more popular than they are. When he shows you why you think you have seen all, it's just in beat he shows you. And everything he shows you in beat is so big. Why he doesn't show you all? He said, you could die seeing it. That is making you run away from your purpose and your calling and your ministry, your assignment. You need to go back to prayer. That's where the womb is. Because of ignorance. You don't want to learn the truth. Somebody called your phone number and called your name doesn't make him a real man of God. By their fruit, we shall know them. It's not by their gifts. The gifts are the elementary things. Gifts are easy to cut, to carry. You can impact gifts on people. If I blow air, now some of you will catch some strange gifts here. But what's your life? What are you living for? What are your values? That's the missing thing in this age now. People are scamming God. They don't have the real life and the real substance that makes them Christians. All they want is to collect what God has to give. They are not looking for God. So we have raised a self-centered generation. They are in the church. All they are looking for is what will benefit them. Hello. Have I lost you? Are you still here? I'm about closing. But the fire is going to start tonight. When I finish showing them this one in Jeremiah, I want you to show them Jewel. Go back to Jeremiah. Then after Jewel, you go back to Habakkuk. Before this weekend is over, If the devil couldn't stop you from coming for this meeting, he failed already. He failed already. Best thing that can happen to you is to follow through. What are your distractions? It's time to give it up. For some of you, it's phone, WhatsApp, Facebook that is making your life a liability. For some of you, it's Instagram making your life a liability. Which Instagram raised Moses? As I behold his face, I'm changed from glory to glory. You people are, some of you are changing from one fake makeup to another. Instagram uh, makeovers, Instagram filters, Instagram whatever. That's what you are changed into. When we look at you early in the morning, you look different from what we see in the afternoon. So when we look at your picture on Instagram, you look different from what we see in real life. That's what you are changed into. For people like us, when we wait on the Lord, we carry His weight. For people like us, when we look unto God, we become like God. So when men look at us, they can find solution. Is somebody hearing what I'm saying? We are bringing back those days of the outpouring of God. Those days were engineers. You don't need to be a pastor. Architect, engineer. Just constructing a road. A cripple is walking. With your helmet and overall. You don't need to carry a Bible in your hand. You are a walking Bible. Thy word have I hidden in my heart. So I may not sin again. You just carry a walking Bible inside. And you go to the guy and say, Oga, do you want to walk? He said, I don't know. The doctor said that I can't walk again. He said, hey, sure up. Don't tell me what the doctor says. I asked you a question. Do you want to walk? He said, but you are not a doctor now. How would you help me? You are an engineer. He said, no, you are a son who was constructing a road. He says, you are still wasting my time. I said, do you want to walk? And the man says, okay, I want to walk. And I said, okay, silver nor gold have I not. But such as I have. In the name of Jesus, the Son of God. Rise up. Rise up! The 
That's the days we are talking about. That's the days where we return back to the real signs and wonders. You don't need arrangement for these things. You don't need to run to a prophet. God has made you a prophet to the nations. There's a sleeping going on in the church of the end time. My job is to shake the tables. Shake the things that can be shaken. Break the walls of religion. Break the walls and the boundaries of religion. And let the armies that are locked up inside be released to fulfill their ministry. The days of superstarism has come to an end. Those days where pastors and bishops, prophets or whatever you call yourself, are superstars to be celebrated. What happens to Ephesians chapter 4 verse 17? Ephesians chapter 4 from verse 11 rather. The fivefold ministry office is given for the equipping of the saints. The unleashing of that army for the work of ministry. What is going on now? Can you imagine what the church will look like when you are preaching here? And the Holy Ghost is moving in his ammo. Just preaching here. You're preaching here in the back. Like, and brothels in Imo State are shutting down. Can you imagine what it looked like? Women pay the price for this real thing. And then God begins to export their spirit out of their bodies. And take them into people's dreams. And they start preaching even in dreams. Even in dreams. People start giving their life to Jesus in their sleep. You don't think we can get there? We have a church in this age that doesn't think these things can happen. Because nobody who taught you. And you don't even think you can be the one God can use. A young lady preached the gospel in school. She was a Nifesian. Nifes. Many years ago, preached and preached and preached and preached to the point that she broke down physically helped. And then it was just a few days to her exams. And of course, she's intelligent, she had prepared for the exams also. And then broke down and they took her to the hospital. And the doctor said, You must be in the hospital. She said, I have exams, I have exams, I can't be here. He said, No, you can't go. You will write it next year, you'll be here. And the lady is a medical student. For those of you who think it's about stethoscope, stop confusing yourself. Dr. Enenche is a doctor. Pastor Enenche is a doctor. Betty Enenche is a medical doctor. Go and find out what is the difference between those medical doctors and other doctors. And this is when they go to different states and rural places. They go with Millions worth of goods, medical implement, million naira worth of items, giving people free, building hospitals, building scholarship, employing people for free. Don't you want that kind of life? If you other that a man built a road in Abuja, constructed a road, the whole Okada Association, Drivers Association, the government, everybody came. The other day, it is even Christ Embassy that opened up a new health center in Abuja. And then the minister for health or whatever was there to come and commission it. Don't you want that kind of purposeful life? What you want is to finish, graduate from school as a medical doctor and go and put this whole investment inside hospital. We are not saying you shouldn't work in FMC. But be a different kind of doctor. Difference is in finding and fulfilling your purpose. What was the story I was telling? The medical student was in the hospital. And then her body couldn't write the exam. She was there, weeping. At one point, the Holy Ghost told her, Stop crying. Have you forgotten that with God, nothing shall be impossible? He said, hey, God, I know, but in this case, I need to write my exam. Why are you me now? He said, No, I'm not going to heal you. There's something I want to teach you. I want to show you another dimension of work with me. The lady said, because I've been wondering, I, how can I be sick? He says, for a reason. So stay here. That was meant to last for some whatever. 
days or so. And she was in the hospital, critically ill. <laughs> Why she was there, the exam was written, everything finished. And then she got her healing. And left. Came back to school the next semester. And then all the lecturers and students saw her and were like, ah, Man, you blast. You blast. Every lecturer who sees her was like, Ah, you were so good at my course. Congratulations. And the lady would want to speak. The only goes, like, Shut up. What do you want to say? I said, Shut up. The lady would keep quiet. And I lecturer would say, Yeah, Miss Rose, I knew you were going to make me proud. You were the best in my own course. All the lecturers kept me. You were the best in my own course. She didn't understand it. The same thing with her students. So she wanted to find out, Lord, what happened? All the courses written. What happened? And then the Holy Ghost told her, Is it why you were in the hospital? Do you remember that there were certain hours you slept without knowing when you slept? Is it those were the period for certain papers you had to write? So what we did was we put you in a deep sleep. And then we took your spirit. And then you know the spirit, the Bible says, is the candle of God. It took, we took your spirit and then took it to the exam hall. You went to the exam hall dressed like a student to like them. You exchanged greetings with people. You laughed with people. You sat with them. You touched them. But they didn't know it was your spirit. And then you wrote those exams under the supernatural endowment of God's wisdom. And he said, oh God. Is that why I fell asleep those spirit? He said, that was what happened to you. Do you know some of you can get to a point where God appears in your room or Jesus appears in your room. tells you, come, let's go for a council meeting in heaven. And he takes you in the night. You go for a council meeting. Deliberate on how to take nations. Deliberate on what to do with China. Deliberate on what to do with all these countries. Islam is ravaging and all that. And then you finish, you see the strategies and the blueprint God is putting on the table. And then you are back in the morning. Just to get up and go and execute it. That's the era we want to return the church back to. This into me and half baked Christianity that only comes to church and after service they are taking selfie outside is a dead Christianity. That's why Habakkuk said, Lord, I have heard thy voice and I was afraid. He now said, Oh Lord, revive thy works. This religion is enough. This tradition is enough. We now need your move, your works. He said, Revive your works in the midst of the years. There's something about this end time. There's an end time program God has for this era. And we cannot fulfill that end time program by doing church as usual. Can you take me back, please? Jeremiah. You can sit down if you can, no? He said, before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. And before thou came forth, out of the womb, I sanctified thee. And I ordained thee a prophet unto what? Everybody, a prophet, don't to what? Are you seeing your blueprint? Are you seeing how big your purpose is? Are you seeing how big God's plan and program for your life is? Why are you reducing it to a housewife? Why are you reducing it to a sugar girl? Why are you reducing it? Why are you reducing it to a boy walking aimlessly on the road? You have reduced a whole program for nations to seeking jobs. Meanwhile, you are carrying a divine job inside. And then verse 6 says, Then said I, like most of you are saying, Ah, Lord God, behold, I cannot speak for I am what? A child. That's the excuse some of you have. Lord, no money. Lord, I'm not eloquent. Lord, I'm not a pastor. You need revival this season. Once the fire comes on your head, that excuse is died. Lord, I'm from a poor family. I'm a polygamist. I come from a polygamous family. Lord, what are you talking about? What is there to write about me? Nobody knows me. I like the way somebody said it. He blessed my life so tremendously. He said, the future is not about what you will become. The future is who you are already that you need to manifest. He 
It's not about who you will become. It's about who you are already and you just need to give back to. When you see that thing that is inside you, the you I'm looking at now is not the you that will take nations. The you I'm looking at now is the you that doesn't know that the you that is in you. Say the you I'm looking at now is the you that does not know the you that is in you. Because there's something about the man that changes the moment it downs on him who he is. The moment the knowledge of who he is downs on him. Everything about that man changes. How that man talks, how that man walks, how that man thinks, the man's values, the man's pursuit, the man's goals, the man's drive, the priority of that man, it changes completely. The things he places values on, it changes completely. When I get back home now, I have nothing less than three new books to start working on again. Earlier today, I was at the whatever T, one of the television stations. I secured slots seven days a week to be airing television broadcast. Seven days a week. I bounced more than two hours or one hour there about talking with the director general. You need to see the things he was saying. I was even encouraged. I didn't know that people were thinking that high of me. Do you know what it means for somebody to tell you, thank you for being a helper of our society? Thank you because if not for you, I don't know what have happened to our young people. I don't know what have happened to people around. Thank you for being not just a normal pastor. Thank you for investing in society. Dream for such a life. Seven days. Not just that alone. And then the seven days is every day. It's not uh, like seven days a week only. Seven days in a week, every week. Like that. Because this gospel has to be preached through our available platform. Just this afternoon. Tomorrow morning, now when I get up, I have other assignments I have to go and carry out. We are doing a teens and parents summit for the entire southeast. 5,000 souls. We are targeting minimum to address some salient issues affecting youth, teenagers, and family. That program will try to secure your future. Teens and parents summit. All kinds of vision. I'm thinking after the program also how to develop a leadership and vocational center for all the youth and teenagers in this city. We are already working on the facilities. A place where people can be trained for leadership. Do we have leaders arising from our teenagers? If you look at what the government is doing with your power. See how this country looks. See how Africa is. Then people who should have been adequately preparing to become leaders are busy wasting their lives in hotels, wasting their lives in parties, wasting their lives in clubs. Are we going to raise a new Nigeria that way? Our schools are not even armed with all that it takes to prepare these people. Churches are busy doing religion, doing I see, I see, I prophesy, all kinds of nonsense. Instead of preparing the people for the work of ministry, instead of equipping the people to become leaders in their nations, that's why some of you are confused. You don't even understand what I'm saying. That's how they put sawdust in people's head in church. In the name of religion. In the name of church. Some don't even understand it. Some don't understand it. When the scripture says judgment will begin from the house of the Lord, I want to believe that that judgment will start from the pulpit. It's not even from the house of the Lord. It's, just, it's from here it will start here. A lot of pastors will give accounts for what they did with people God instructed clearly to disciple. They will give accounts. Some of you here, I don't blame you. I blame who taught you before now. Because they gave you an orientation of what the kingdom is. But that's not what it is. The kingdom of God is not in bread and meat. It's not in drink and food. And I said, Ah, Lord God, behold, I cannot speak. For I am a child. But this is what God says to him. He said, But the Lord said unto me, Say not, I am a child. For thou shalt go to all that I shall do, what? Send thee. And whatsoever I command thee, thou shalt do, what? Speak. And then the next one. He said, Be not afraid of their faces. For I am with you. 
to deliver you, said the Lord. The next verse. Then the Lord put forth his hand and touched my mouth. That's the hand you need this season. That's the hand you need this weekend. That invisible hand is beyond what you can understand. It's, when it comes on you, it's beyond what you can explain. The prayer you should pray this weekend is not, oh Lord, give me a new car. It's God, stretch forth your hand on my life. Put your hand on my life. Touch my mouth. Touch my mind. Touch my soul. Touch my heart. Touch my eyes. Open my eyes and show me great and mighty things which I know not. And verse 10, see what it says. Now this is God talking to him. A boy who was saying, I am a child. See what God is telling him is. He says, see, I have this day set you over the nations. He said, and over the kingdoms. Okay. Lift up your hands. Say, Father, open my eyes now. To comprehend and to see what pastor is saying. I don't think you're praying. Put up your hands again. Say, Father, open my eyes to comprehend and to see what this man is saying. This is how my eyes open. The day I knew it, everything for me changed. Oh, so you're not just a young boy, okay? You're not just another bet statistics on paper. You were created here and you have been set over the nations. You were born and dispatched in this world for the purpose of ruling over nations. That means we decide the culture of nations. I am here to decide the life of nations. To decide what happens in nations. That's my job. So when I think about Nigeria, I'm not thinking about Nigeria as a citizen of Nigeria. I'm thinking about Nigeria as one of the contributors, one of the major voices that shapes the destiny of Nigeria. I was watching a clip this afternoon and I was so blessed. Archbishop Duncan Williams. You know him? That Ghanaian pastor. How many of you know him? Okay. When you see him, you think that he's maybe he was made an archbishop from heaven. He was born like you. He sucked breasts like you. He poops like you poop. Papa Idahosa was saying in one of those meetings he preached, he said that when Archbishop Duncan Williams met him, he couldn't speak English. He said they gave him paper, he could not write his name. Archbishop Nicholas Duncan Williams. He could not spell his own name. He could not pronounce his own name. Not to talk of any other thing in English. And then Papa Idahosa said, But there's something beyond your ability. You know, there's a way I hear things. I don't hear the gospel with my ear. I hear it with the ear of my spirit. He said, there's something beyond your natural human ability. He says, the ability of God. He said, when the power of God invaded that young man. I watched the video. He said, when the power of God invaded that young man. He said, that young man's life changed and turned around overnight. He said, today, God is taking that man everywhere in the world. And everywhere Archbishop Duncan Williams stands to speak. He said, the power of God is made manifest. Yet that man could not pronounce his name. I've watched a couple of his clips. I said, is it the same man or is he another man? Is the same man that became another man. Is the same man that became another man. That's the prayer you need to pray. God, show me the other side of who I am. Show me the hidden me. Show me that me you called me to be. Not the one that people know. Not the one that I've always known. The one that is inside that is yet to be revealed. So I was watching him today. Look at him in his entourage. With different men. Walking into the stadium. Where the president of Ghana was sitting. And the president of Ghana stood up. With all his entourage. For a man who could not pronounce his name. The man walked in majestically. And was giving a chair to sit next to the president. Behind him was Bishop Dark Edwards Mills. Walking in. Bishop Dark is his son. Yes, this Bishop Dark you hear about. He's the son of Papa. 
Nicholas, Duncan Williams. And then what was he there to do? He was there to do the groundbreaking ceremony and dedicate the new national worship center the whole nation of Ghana is building. And he was the one called to come and do that. If Archbishop Duncan Williams didn't discover who he was or who he is, which president will be standing for him today? Anything God called you to be is nothing small. Isaiah chapter 16 now, it's nothing small. It mustn't be a pastor. It's nothing small. That thing God planned for your life is nothing small. Eyes have not seen. Ears have not heard. It has not even entered the heart of man or the mind of man. The things God has prepared for those who love him. Put verse 20. Let them see it. It's important to see it. Is it okay verse 21 please verse 21 thy people shall be all righteous they shall inherit the land forever the branch of my planting the work of my hand that i may be glorified god wants to do his work in you you are his handiwork he wants you to be an expression of the work of his hand and then look at what happens when you become the work of God's hand. God wants to put his hand on you and walk in you. He wants to do something in you that when he's done doing it, and he showcases you to the nations, nations will wonder where you have been. They will wonder which kind of breed you are. He says, a little one, that's the same you. A little one. So in case you said I'm too little, he said, your least, a little one shall become a thousand. That means your lifetime, you will influence at least a thousand. And that's where a little one. And now added, and a small one, a strong nation. So if you are little, at least one thousand souls, one thousand lives that will be shook, that will be that will be you know changed because of you. Then if you are small, at least a whole nation. That means every one of you sitting down here, one nation is waiting for you. One nation. You're supposed to be. The ruler and you don't need to be an elected one god already elected you and he appointed you a prophet toward the nations and as i close up back to jeremiah let me close up with that I'm trying to lay the foundation is why you need revival revival is simply a, a reawakening a spiritual reawakening so you came here for this season you set your life on fire Release the abilities of God in your life and release you as an army to do all kinds of exploits. Moreover, the word of the Lord came unto me saying, Jeremiah, what seest thou? And I said, I see a rod of an almond tree. No, no, that's not what I want to read. It's verse 10 I want to read. I want to submit that verse 10. He now says, see, I have this day set thee over the nations and over the kingdoms to root out. You know what that means? Whatever you don't like in nations, go and uproot it. I hate Malian spirit and I will uproot it. What are you saying? One boy who doesn't have a direction just comes from somewhere and is promoting one nonsense. And people are buying into it. I heard the last check I did, they said about 3 million youths into the Malian team in Nigeria. Yes, 3 million disciples of Nairamani who are aimless. I walked into an eatery yesterday and I met some. It was it yesterday or two days ago? When I walked in, the ladies were talking to me somewhere in the day. And they were telling me, when we, when we walked in and then we saw you, my friend was telling me, saying, What do we do to cause trouble here? So let's just cause trouble. Let's look for somebody's head and break. Malia. That's a spirit in the air now. That's what the lady was saying. That's what my friend said. I said, hey, you are part of this Malian thing. And he's not speaking the language. I said, as fine as you guys are. With this Queen's English you guys are speaking. You are into that nonsense. Malians are mannerless. Malians don't respect people. Malians don't talk well. Malians don't do this. Malians don't wear belts. So you see one wearing one kind of clothes, and this other side is open. 
she doesn't care whether she wears pants she can sit down like that and be showing the whole world everything she has that's the spirit spreading everywhere now next on grow your world with reverend queens abba to live a spirit-led life dies struggle to love there are some of you here you see the hatred in your hearts that's why this meeting is called. You cannot impact a generation you don't love. If you are a single lady busy pursuing your assignment, and a single man busy pursuing your assignment, will you meet together? You will pursue assignments. Uh, no, passionately, you didn't come here to come and eat in the meat. In the Holy Ghost. Let me tell you what happened on the day of Pentecost. Yeah!